Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul, and if the Blue Beetle trailer is bugging you out, then this is the video for you. Packed with easter eggs, hidden details, and things you missed, there's a lot to talk about in this brand new first look. Throughout this video, we're going to be breaking it all down, and going over who the character is in the comics, and their long and rich history that's got us to this point. This was originally supposed to be an HBO Max release, but it's now been pushed to a full theatrical one, and James Gunn has hinted that he's bringing this character into the DCU. Last year, I, I was thinking they were going to back girl the entire thing, but Warner Brothers must have a lot of faith in the film to upgrade it to a full release. Now, the trailer follows Jaime Reyes as he's given the Blue Beetle Scarab, and this transforms him into the titular character. The trailer does a brilliant job of introducing us to his family, and it also pretty much shows all of the Scarab's powers and what it can do. Now, as for Jaime, he's one of the many iterations of Blue Beetle that we've had over the years. The first version was originally created by Charles Nicholas Wojcicki all the way back in 1939. Several companies have owned the rights to the character, with him originally belonging to Fox Comics before this changed to Charlton. DC then bought the rights to the characters back in 1983, and this came in a package deal along with characters like Peacemaker and The Question. Alan Moore originally wanted to use these for Watchmen, but DC kicked off, and thus he had to do ones that riffed on them for the final release. Obviously DC were kicking themselves for years after that they didn't let him use the ones they'd bought because they had less rights with the Watchmen and ended up having to do what they did with Doomsday Clock. <sighs> anyway, the original Blue Beetle was called Dan Garrett, who was the son of a murdered police officer. Given special abilities by a sacred scarab, he became the hero of a weekly radio serial and his own comic book line. We actually see his costume later on at the end of the trailer, in the centre of the models, and this is next to the one that followed it, with a red belt boot and gloves. Now there seems to be a mannequin with a missing costume as well, and this could be hinting at someone else being out there wearing the costume that may be our second version of the character. Now that man was called Ted Cord, and during the Crisis on Infinite Earth storyline, he was taken over into the DC Universe along with the other Charlton characters. Ted was more of a scientist, and it was thought that the Blue Beetle Scarab had been destroyed. I think at the end of the trailer that we can see the characters coming across his lair, which is why they all have the scientific tech there. They say it's like Batman, who of course uses gadgets, and we can see Jaime looking over a power belt. His sister Malagros checks out an energy shield, and George Lopez snoops around in some cupboards and calls Batman a fascist. Internet ain't gonna like that, mate. Spoiler alert, they're gonna be f***ing kicking off. Anyway, though you might assume Lopez is gonna be playing his dad, this is actually his uncle Rudy. His love interest Jenny is also at the back of the room, and this is her likely showing them about the basement in Court Industries. We can see the name Cord on the tower at the beginning, and my guess is that we're going to be learning about how Ted found the scarab, and then the company took it, experimented on it, and then Jenny snuck it out like what we see. She's very much a Gwen Stacy and Amazing Spider-Man archetype, and will probably be sort of like Liz from Spider-Man Homecoming in that it doesn't really go anywhere. Now why I'm saying that is because in the comics, Jaime ends up dating a character called Thirteen from Young Justice, real name Tracy Thurston. I'm guessing Jenny will be the girl he's after first done, the movie before he gets his thirst on for thirst on. <laughs> now it's possible that Jenny is based on Jenny Quantum, who was his friend in the comics too. Oop, friend zone. Anyway, she was a member of Young Justice as well, but she ended up leaving the group to then go and explore the multiverse. Now back to the company, and we know that in the film, Susan Sarandon will be playing Victoria Cord, who in the comics is Ted Cord's sister. CEO of Cord Industries, she was first introduced in Blue Beetle Graduation Day issue 2, and she became one of the first foes the character clashed against in that run. Sharon Stone was initially in talks to play her, but I'm guessing they watched Catwoman and went with Susan instead. Anyway, Cord eventually became a member of the JLA, but he was killed during the Infinite Crisis event. Again, going back to the mannequin, I think he might be out and about in the world, and potentially he had to run away due to his sister's experiments. Now at one point in the trailer, we also see them flying out in the bug. I'm guessing this is called ship, with them using it to escape the skyscraper and head home. The bug pulls from the comics, and if it looks familiar, then this is because this is what was adapted into Night Owl's Archie and Watchmen. Now the third Blue Beetle, after Ted Cord and Dan Garrett, is the one we're going to centre around in the movie, and as I'm sure you can guess, that is Jaime Reyes. He'll be played by none other than Cobra Kai, Sholo, Maradiwenya, and though they're kind of riffing on the comics, there are some things that are altered from it. In that, he discovered the magical scarab which attached itself to his back, and this gave him the armoured battle suit with enhanced abilities. Now, though it was thought that it had been destroyed whilst Ted was in the role, it turned out that he'd actually found it in a pyramid. 
This was later lost on the Rock of Eternity, and when this was destroyed it ended up hurtling it across the world, which is where it landed in El Paso. Jaime discovered it at this point, and the rest is history. Now they are changing things up slightly from that, and instead of having it in El Paso, we're heading up the fictional Palmera City. This new location in the DC Universe was first introduced in Blue Beetle Graduation Day, and it keeps it with the motif of the comic publishers inventing new places for their heroes to inhabit. At least I, ho I hope Palmyra City is fictional, cause f***ing hell if it's not, I'm gonna be in deep, deep sh**. Anyway, pronounce, I've already pronounced everyone's name wrong, so don't kick off. Now, we start off with Jaime and his sister working at a resort, and from there we cut to their home life out away from the city in the more impoverished areas. This juxtaposes the opening of the teaser, in which he's posing like one of the elite that owns a mansion, always hits the thumbs up button, and has a wealth of YouTube subscriptions to mediocre channels like the one you're watching right now. So hit that subscribe button if you want to achieve your dreams. See ya chump. Now we next see him going to what's later said to be a job interview at Cord Industries. I'm guessing it's a similar thing to Oscorp, where they have internships as Jenny is there as well, similar to how Gwen was in that movie. I'm not 100% on my American school uniforms because I'm not a weirdo mate, uh, but pr I'm pretty sure this is a school jacket with a patch on it denoting his. In the comics he went to El Paso High School, but with the change up to Palmera City, they may have altered that as well. Anyway, we see him sitting in the lobby with other possible applicants beside him before Gwenny, so Jenny comes down and gives him a big belly burger box. This fictional fast food chain has appeared in the DC Universe at several points, and it's featured in CW's Flash quite a fair bit. The mascot is a big bearded guy, just like in the comics, and this is made to look like John Byrne who invented it for DC. After opening it up, we see some fries, and also the scarab where the burger should be. After picking it up, this immediately jumps out at Jaime, it does a sort of face hugger on him, and it electrocutes his uncle, and then a transformer. It's very much foreshadowing that this has a lethal side to it, and it carries this idea of body horror as we watch it take over him. Now the scarab is very much its own life form, and it's a sort of parasite that brings with it incredible abilities. I don't know if parasite is the right word, but Jaime's unable to remove it from his back, and it can also communicate with him telepathically. In the comics, the first night it attached itself to him, seen it inducing powerful hypnotic dreams, and I could see them even doing some stuff like what we get with Venom. By that I mean, the scarab kinda goes back and forth with Jaime, and this adds a lot of the action scenes and also the dialogue. They talk about how it can control its host, and he may have to wrestle with it, and turn it away from being the world destroying machine that Jenny says it is. Jarvis and Tony of course also had some nice banter back and forth in the MCU and having this internal dialogue just allows the character to kind of sign off their thoughts in a natural way. Comics are of course able to show characters thoughts whereas it's a lot harder in a film so having something like this would work really well to let the character spout off quips. Personally I think it sounds more like Karen from Homecoming and again they are leaning into this sort of Spider-Man idea because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now the shot of Susan Sarandon has her saying that it chose him, and obviously this whole thing's gonna be about how he has a good heart, and that's why it went to him instead of her. He has his family's values too, and like his uncle says, with great power comes great catchphrase. Blue Beetle, you know he's gonna care, he's our next Spider-Man. Yeah, for sure, easily, right? Right? Oh yeah, he next up, easy, for sure. Oh, okay, he's our next Spider-Man, okay, he's gonna carry the franchise, we know exactly what's going on. Everybody knows Blue Beetle. Yes, when you think Blue Beetle, you think Spider-Man. They right next to each other. Oh, okay, okay. I, I, cause, like, I was like, I was like, I can't remember who's bigger, like Blue Beetle or Spider-Man. Every time I watch Spider-Man, I'm like, oh, Blue Beetle coming up next. Yeah, Blue Beetle really did that first though. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, That's for sure. That's what I'm saying, bro. A Blue Beetle then takes his first flight, and we see him overlooking the entire world. It shows the power he's been given, but it also cements that it can control him and not the other way around. Now from here, we cut to Jenny opening a door to what I'm guessing is the basement in Court Industries. There are rumours that Jason Sudeikis will be playing Ted in the film, but they've been denied like an Andrew Garfield photoshop, even though we've seen it in 4K mate, we've all seen it. Now next we get a bus being cut in half with Jaime's perception of time changing as it goes on. This is sliced by an energy shield, and it's something that the character had in the comics. Now if you've played the Injustice games, then chances are that you've either fought as Blue Beetle, or you've smashed him like it's a dislike button on a Ryan Airy video. Shut the f up, Ryan Airy! Anyway, the Blue Beetle has a number of different powers, and these include flight, superhuman strength, and metamorphosis. His hands and body in the suit can shapeshift and change into different weaponry, meaning that you can pull off some sweet combos in Injustice 2. Shabow, by the game. Now, this weaponry tends to be based around sound, energy, and pyrokinesis, making it non lethal. 
He also has mechanokinesis, which means he can alter and manipulate machines. Pretty cool skill set, and depending on what the situation calls for, the Scarab can take over and help out. We then get Jaime at home with his family, and this kind of gives us a Ms. Marvel setup where she's learning to deal with her newfound abilities whilst also living at home. Where they differentiate though is that Jaime's family know about it instantly here, and this is more them helping him deal with his power rather than him hiding it. We then see a machine powering up, and quick disclaimer, the trailer we got isn't super high quality, so it's difficult to make out little details like this, like, like what they are, but they do seem to be miniature scarabs. We have the electricity as well, which is similar to what shot out at Rudy, and the transformer at the beginning of the trailer. Victoria Cord clearly finds out about him early on, and we see SWAT team members start to swarm his home. His family are held up, and later on we see Jaime beating the same SWAT team members up underground, possibly leading off the back of this scene. Now in between this we get a shot of Carapax the indestructible man. A major antagonist of the Blue Beetle, he was an archaeologist that they could end up using to explain how they've managed to get their hands on the scarab. In the comics, he came across an indestructible robot suit, and they might end up using this later on in the film. Now, this was red, and potentially the power cells we saw charging up before could be the suits starting up. Failing to get control of the scarab might have pushed Victoria to create her own, which could lead to him having this sort of reverse scarab suit. Now, he does the sort of usual villain stuff talking about how the love he has for his family is in fact a weakness. It's not exactly A1 writing, don't expect this to be an Oscar winner, but he's sort of going to be a first villain that forces the hero to get to grips with his powers. We then see the bug flying out, and this seems to go to an island, potentially where the scarab was discovered. It's a giant rock, potentially referencing the Rock of Eternity, and this could be where they find Ted caught at. You also see the family home then getting destroyed, and this is following the motif that Jaime's new abilities have brought a cost with them. He then creates a giant sword using the suit, and this looks very similar to Clouds from Final Fantasy VII. The buster shows this buster's a big buster, but he loves video games, so we bloody love him. Shabow! Anyway, the trailer ends with them in Cord's lab, and his sister's wearing an overall with Reyes on it, looking like a mechanic shit. We can also catch an Area 51 arcade cabinet, which, no prizes for guessing, is about aliens. As his uncle Rudy slags off Batman, we can also catch a sarcophagus in front of him, sighing back to the whole archaeological idea. Anyway, that ends the trailer, and I'm guessing that some of you might want to pick up some comics involving the character, so the best place to start is probably Infinite Crisis, as that kind of recounts a lot of the main events with, uh, and the backstory of him. After that, you want to get Blue Beetle Volume 7, yes, that's Volume 7, as it basically builds off the back of Infinite Crisis. I think they might have updated it to be called Blue Beetle Jaime Reyes Volume 1, but I've, I've got no idea, mate. Got no f***ing idea now. Now, I'm guessing this primarily will just be an origin story, and we'll probably just follow the things laid out in his secret origins. I'm actually happy we're getting an origin story for once, you know. I, I miss them a bit, and we kind of had this trend where characters like Ironheart and so on were just thrown into movies as characters without us really learning who they were first. I just want an origin story so I can get attached to them, and yeah, this movie at least seems to be doing that. Now as for my thoughts on the trailer, you know, I kinda have a weird relationship with DC, and I've often said that no one hates DC more than DC fans. I do think Shazam! Fury of the Gods showed that they've kinda killed the buzz around these movies by basically announcing that they don't matter. Spoiler alert though, we are an insignificant speck of dust in the cosmos that's barely alive for a blink of an eye in what comes to the vastness of time and space, and in the end, nothing matters at all. Not you, not anyone you know, and certainly not some DC movie. Could be fun though, right? And back to the initial point, I think that they have kind of killed the hype for this a bit. Personally, I think that James Gunn's a great director and writer, but, but he's just a crap Hollywood exec. Guys probably cost the studio a lot of money announcing that things don't matter, and he also spends a lot of time on Twitter arguing with people which you never see my uncle Kevin Feige doing. So yeah, I've just had no hype for the upcoming DC films, and have kind of thought that they're just releasing them for the sake of it, so we can get the reboot in a couple of years. The drama around DC has overshadowed their products, and it's all been a big mess. Saying that though, this looks good, and I am excited. I think Jaime is one of those underdog characters that can really grow into their own, and shall of course kill it in Cobra Kai. Guy is a great martial artist, and I think they can do a lot of cool things with him. Though DC seem to be determined to just ruin their entire universe, 
Personally, I think this actually looks really good, and it is a shame that the drama kind of overshadows everything. The Blue Beetle is kind of a C-list character that the studio can build up, and though I don't think it's going to be a massive movie, I do think that it can build up towards something bigger down the line when he grows into the role. I'm guessing that they've also not spent that much in the movie with it originally being an HBO Max release, and it's probably going to be a win-win for the studio. Also, nice to see a Latino character getting some love. They've always been reduced to either being sidekicks or minor characters, but yeah, you know what, I hope it does well, and this first look, it really got me on board. So yeah, quite excited for it now, even with all the ongoing DC drama. Now I'd love to hear your thoughts on the trailer, we've got lots of trailers out at the moment, so make sure you comment below and let me know. We are in a competition right now, giving away the Superman 4K box set to 3 subscribers on the 15th of April, and all you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on, and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the teaser. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month, and the winners of the last one are on screen right now, so if that's you, then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch, you want to see our original thoughts of the trailer, then definitely check out our reaction over on our Heavy Spoilers Clips channel. That'll be linked on screen right now, a bit of a side channel where we do smaller videos, more, more things, just not doing breakdowns, and yeah, definitely head over there, subscribe as well please, and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. You take care, peace.